Okay, so let, let's get into refraction in two dimensions, which is normally what people think about when they think about refraction, right? So in one dimension, if you hit straight on, the wavelength just gets shorter, okay? This is this being the wavelength here, this distance. So this is a laser beam. I shine it straight into the water. All that happens is it keeps going straight, but the wavelength gets shorter. Frequency stays the same. Wavelength gets shorter, right? But if it hits at an angle, okay, it has to bend. And the reason it has to bend is that in order for this wavelength to get shorter, here's one wavelength, right? Here's the other wavelength. In order for it to get shorter and in order for the wave crests to be the same above and below, like these things, right? <laughs> in order for that to happen, it's actually got to, the wave plane here has got to change direction from being this way to being this way, okay? Um, and this is how you derive something called Snell's Law, okay? Um, okay, so, so, so that, that's the basic idea, right? The, the one way to think about it is that the right side of this wave, if you're driving this thing in this, if the right side slows down first then, and the left side slows down second, it's gonna, the, this side will kind of drive it around. This will tend to turn the wave this direction, okay? So, and, you know, and one might imagine uh, rows of soldiers, you know, going into mud or something like that, right? Um, <laughs> or better yet, think of the um, Rhodes Festival Parade, right? Uh, one of the ways that they actually make the people go around corners is they have the lines actually stay straight and the people on the inside slow down, the people on the outside speed up and they keep the lines straight actually. Okay. Or um, if you look at waves on the, um, on the sh along the shore, since the water's shallow water, the waves go slower. They, they tend to refract and bend into the shore. It's always that you kind of bend into the slower medium. Okay. And it happens if you, if you go into the water, you bend more into the water. If you come out, you bend sort of more out of the water like that, which is kind of interesting, right? Which, which is why people look short when they're standing in the water because the light from her foot actually comes up out of the water, bends and goes there, enters his eye, right? He's waving to her kind of tentatively because he's sort of confused about where her foot is, right? Looks like her foot is there and that she's maybe very, very short, but she's not, you know, it's terrible. So it's a, it's a, it's a travesty, okay? Now the derivation of this thing, this distance here, this is our wavelength above, okay? This is lambda, I'll call this lambda one, okay? And then this distance here, this is lambda two, okay? Um, this wavelength, or this, this angle and this angle are congruent, right? And then this angle here and this angle here are congruent, right? Notice that you've got a right triangle here and you've got a right triangle here. They share the same hypotenuse. They're co-hypotenusular, right? So to derive this, what we're going to do is just set up um, a little fraction here, right? And we'll set up a, a little expression. So I'm going to say sine of theta 1 is the opposite side, right? Theta 1 is lambda 1 divided by the hypotenuse, right? Sine of theta 2 is, well, here's theta 2. The opposite side is lambda 2, right? So lambda 2 divided by the hypotenuse, right? And then I can just divide these guys out, right? And the hypotenuse goes away of the bison, right? So I can get uh, kind of like the law of sine. Sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals uh, lambda 1 over lambda 2. It's kind of our law of, of of signs, right? Okay, now most of these things don't deal with the wavelength, so let's um, let's deal with this. Let's see, wavelength is, they deal with the index of refraction, so you've got an n1 and an n2 here, right? So lambda here is going to be, what is it? Be velocity over frequency, okay? And then that's going to be, uh, isn't velocity the speed of light divided by the index of refraction? So that's going to be uh, c over N1F, and that's lambda 1, right? And lambda 2 is uh, C over N2F. Okay, so now let's plug these guys in for our wavelengths, right? So I'll rewrite this guy. It's going to be sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals, and then I'm going to go lambda 1 is this guy C over N1F, 
right? So lambda one's in the numerator, and then I'm going to multiply, I'm going to divide by lambda two, so multiply by the reciprocal of this guy, right? So N2F over C. Okay, so let's see. As you can see, I can cancel these guys, right? Right, and the frequency is the same above and below the surface, right? And you end up with sine theta one over sine theta two. Okay, equals uh, n two over n one. Okay. Now IB also adds, puts the velocities in there, and you end up with this expression. And that's because remember that uh, velocity and index of refraction are these reciprocal things. Okay, this is how it appears in the IB data packet. Um, that's just fine. The rest of the world writes something called Snell's law this way: n1 sine theta one equals n2 sine theta two. Okay. The nice thing though about about the IV way is that they give you the velocities here, right? And they 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 have given problems where they give like an ocean wave comes and hits the shore and the velocity changes and you have to figure it out in terms of velocity, okay? But almost always, I mean, if you go to college or something like that, you're gonna, it's gonna be indices of refraction, okay? Um, okay, so this is, again, this is what those all are, um, index of refraction. These are the velocities, okay? V1 and V2 are the velocity in, one and two. Okay. Um, and all right. So here's an example. A laser hits glass at 23 degree angle from the air. What angle does it make um, with the bottom surface of the glass after? Okay, this is the hardest possible you know question that we could ask. Okay, so let's let's make it as confusing as possible. Right? Okay, so what they're saying is that this angle here is uh, 23 degrees. Okay. Now, concept zero. Do not use that uh, thing, right? What we what we use in, in in refraction is we use these angles here. Okay. So this theta here is uh, 67 degrees. Okay. So that's the angle we want to use. We do not want to use that angle, right? And then this guy is going to is going to refract like this. So here, n1 is uh, 1.00. Really, it's 003, right? But we'll just go with that, right? And two is uh, glass, so it's 1.51. Okay, did I say water? No, oh, anyway. Um, and then we're going to actually find this angle here. Now, it does ask for, like, this angle here, but I'm not going <laughs> to... That would be way too difficult, right? Okay. Actually, well, to get this answer, we'll have to get do that, right? Most problems aren't this complicated, though, right? So this is actually theta 2. I'm going to call this theta 1. I'm going to use Snell's law because that's what I've always used in my life. Sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay, so N1 is 1.00 sine of 67 equals N2 1.51 sine theta 2. Okay, so i got to do a little inverse sine here, right? Okay. So uh, I'm going to go sine of 67. Is that okay? Are we good? Oh, actually, let me check my mode. I am in degrees. Good enough. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to divide by 1.51. And I'm going to take the inverse sine of that. So second sine of the answer. 37.56 degrees. Degrees and that, you know, almost always they're going to ask you, they're going to give you this angle, they're going to ask you for this angle. Now, the answer that's down here, they're actually asking you to find this angle right there. Uh, I can do that by going 90 minus 37.56, right? And I got 52.4 degrees for this angle, okay? But don't get, don't get it in your head that that's what people ask you for or give you, right? Um, so anyway, yeah. There you have it. So it's really a pretty simple um, expression.